What is going on everybody? I am the Tim Eister and welcome back to Rockport. In this video, there's going to be a whole lot going on. So I'm going to be focusing on the city's waterfront, but along the waterfront, there's going to be many different things. So we're going to get into some residential, some commercial, some fishing areas, you name it. There's going to be all sorts of different things. So it is bound to be a very interesting episode. So this is bound to be a very interesting episode. So sit back and enjoy. My plan for this build was to just start at one end and work my way across the whole port area, starting with this corner. And this corner is going to be the fishing area of the whole waterfront. So uh, I'm gonna be playing a lot with the Fishing Industries DLC, but before I build anything at all, I have to terraform this whole area and make it suitable for all the fishing buildings because, you know, they are quite large and I do want them to fit as as neatly as I can possibly get them in this port area. So a lot of work actually went into this off camera, or may maybe not off camera, but I, I recorded everything that I did. It's just a lot of this didn't make the cut and I included the final rendition, I guess, of, of what I'm doing right now. So I tried a lot of variations on how to shape the port area. And, and you know how to get all these buildings to fit and it was no small task I had to like you know quit without saving maybe three or four times before I got to like this final version that that you're seeing me build right now so right now it may look like a jumbled mess all of these buildings are smushed together but using a mod I'm actually able to delete the roads that are connected to this building and it's a very specific mod I had to use the better bulldozer mod now, technically this delete functionality is included with Move It, and 99% of the time it works great. However, with Move It, when I was trying to select just the road attached to these buildings, it was deleting the entire building. So I went to explore on forums and on Reddit and all over the place, and somebody on Reddit actually recommended this mod to do exactly this. Um, I think the person asking the question was looking for a way to change the roads that were connected to these buildings and uh, somebody suggested this so with this mod you can actually delete the road entirely and then change it to whatever you want or or just not have a road at all um, so it actually works great now you have to be careful with it because it deletes everything like it'll delete all of the the sea walls or whatever that are underneath the, the building so you just kind of have to be mindful of where you're or of what you're trying to delete. But it works great. And in this case, it's awesome um, because now I'm able to create these really, really nice piers and I will put roads back. I, I will connect the roads up, but I'm gonna use the industry roads as you'll see in a little bit. So it does look a little bit better and I'm able to create a much more compact port. Um, I don't think I will be keeping this mod though. This, is, this was really like a last ditch Mickey Mouse kind of solution. <laughs> I don't really think I'll have a use for this mod in the future, so I won't be including it in the list of mods that I'm using for this series, but um, I will highlight it in this video because it worked fantastic for what I was trying to do. So highly recommended if you're looking to delete any connected roads on, on any building really. It seems like it would work just fine. For the port area, or at least the fishing area of the port, I am going to include most of the fishing industries building. However, there's a couple of them that I won't be able to fit. Um, the ones that have any sort of structure that's detached from the main building on the shore, such as the one you see on the right of your screen, you have like these three little pods or whatever floating, floating out in the water. I won't be able to include any more of those, so that's the only example that I'm gonna have in the city. Um, unfortunately, they just don't fit. I may be able to place them elsewhere in town, but at least in this episode, um, I, I won't be able to place every fishing building. Also, there's no tuna on this map that I only realized while I was building this. <laughs> so 
I think I did end up putting a tuna building during this build, but it's it's just gonna complain the whole time um, that the series exists, unfortunately. But whatever, it's not a big deal. I can just, uh, maybe I'll just turn it off. That might work, I'll have to try that. But uh, yeah, I mean, most of the fishing buildings are gonna be placed. So all the, the fishing factories, the um, even like the seafood market, I believe it's called, I ended up placing down as you just saw. So most of, of the buildings are there. So moving on, um, you can see here that I made the transition from a sort of industrial seawall to a more nice one with the trees. Um, I guess the, the new ones that were just released with the game. This is gonna be a much more, I guess, um, commercial slash residential area. So there's gonna be like big apartments and stuff here and, and businesses and little walkways. I want this area to be somewhat touristic as well. So um, I guess the, the seawall will also act as a sort of boardwalk that you can walk from one end of the port to the other. One thing that's very challenging in City Skylines is to create realistic looking marinas for like pleasure craft and, and smaller boats because you're very limited in what assets you have. I pretty much placed them all down just a second ago and, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so um, you really have to sort of play with the land and, and get these to like fit together so it looks like a marina. But I really wish that they included some sort of marina asset in the game at some point. But that, unfortunately, that wish won't come true as the final update for City Skylines has been released already. And it, it includes some pretty uh, unique buildings, as you've most likely seen. We now have a timer that is counting down until the release of City Skylines 2. I'm going to try to fit that in the city somewhere. That would be cool. Maybe up on a mountain somewhere, you know, we can just sort of view how much time we have to build Rockport <laughs> until City Skylines 2 comes out. Because I imagine once City Skylines 2 comes out, I'm... I don't know. Maybe I will keep playing City Skylines 1. Maybe I won't. I, I don't know. I guess it depends how much content is in the game upon release date. We'll know for sure as these uh, dev diaries and, and new posts come out about the game, featuring all the, the different game features and stuff. But uh, until then, you know, we, we'll just have to see. Anyways, back to the game. What I'm building now is a cruise ship port. So with Rockport being a very busy touristy town with its mountains and its beautiful nature and the city itself being very beautiful, or at least it's going to be, <laughs> um, I thought that a cruise ship port would be necessary to bring tourists from all over into town and uh, also just regular passengers, not necessarily from a cruise ship, but just a regular passenger ship should be able to make their way into the city. Um, so along this long pier here, I'm experimenting with different buildings, just trying to trying to get something that looks half decent. It's obviously a little bit of trial and error with these types of things, especially when you're playing around with vanilla assets. Of course, as I was just saying, your choices are very limited. And in this case, unfortunately, I wasn't really happy with the way the cruise ship port was looking, so I decided to move it back on to to the mainland, I guess we'll call it, <laughs> and not the, the pier that is sticking out there. So um, just a, a slight move, and I actually think it looks fantastic with these new changes. And as you can tell, these are two separate assets that I've cobbled together to make one large port area. So these are two separate passenger ports. And I think, well, they've recently been added to the game. And I think one of them is actually now included with the base game. Uh, the one on the left, I believe, is included with the base game now. Don't quote me on that. But it, uh, anyway, I, I feel like I should know these things. <laughs> I do have every DLC. But, you know, with... With the mix match of DLCs and stuff, it's it's hard to keep track of what's included with what. Anyway, I think this area looks really fantastic, and you know it's it's gonna be 
It's going to be teeming with life here once the city really starts to take shape. It's going to be a busy spot, and, uh, and I love the way it turned out. So you just saw me place down one more fishing industries building and that is to act mostly as like a filler piece or, or a sort of transition into what I'm building next. Now this is totally inspired by Sydney, Australia. <laughs> um, I guess it's close enough to New Zealand, right? And you can totally guess what this is inspired off. Uh, the Sydney Opera House. So I figured that um, Rockport needs an opera house. <laughs> And also, you know, I, I felt like the whole port area should include at least some buildings that are right on the coast, and that was the perfect contender for it. So anyways, with that being done, I'm going to start to build some actual residential areas in town using these very, very nice wall-to-wall -wall buildings that are included in the Plazas and Promenades DLC. And it's the first time that I'm playing around with these assets and they look absolutely fantastic. I was looking for something that looks modern and, you know, wasn't necessarily like a, a big high rise. So these buildings perfectly fit the bill. The only thing that is, well, I guess it's not really unfortunate. It's, it's I'll just have to kind of wait. Um, this whole area once upon a time was underwater. So that's why everything is just sand. <laughs> so I'll have to wait a little bit until this area transitions back into like nice green lawn. So it looks a bit weird right now, but rest assured that, you know, it eventually it'll grow grass and it'll look all nice. But, you know, ignoring that, I'm actually really happy with how this area turned out, as is the rest of the build. And if I'm honest, this was probably the most fun I've had in City Skylines in a long time. Don't get me wrong, the game is always fun, but I was like really vibing building this. I had some tunes going, and the creative juices were just flowing, and I was just having a really great time building this port area and exploring what the possibilities are when just using vanilla assets. And you know, this, this proves that you can go quite far with just a, a couple of simple mods, and if you don't have access to any mods, if you're playing on console, I guess it can still serve as some inspiration because you know some of this is is still quite possible on the console version but yeah a, a lot of this coast is going to be quite modern however as we go more and more towards the historic district then i'm going to make an effort to try to include some more historic buildings um but as i spoke in in one of the first episodes i think it may have been the first um there's going to be a historic district and then a little bit outside of that is going to be very modern and, you know, um, new. But yeah, overall things are looking great. Um, I'm really, really excited to start to expand into downtown and, and to really build the core of the city. But, uh, you know, building this coastal area was definitely a ton of fun. And you know, a lot of these wall-to-wall -wall buildings, just to, to talk about that for another minute, I've actually never played around with. The, the Promenades and Plazas DLC, or Plazas and Promenades, <laughs> I haven't really played around with that DLC a whole lot. I've placed down a couple of paths maybe here and there, but I've never, I've never experimented with any of the buildings before. And they look absolutely fantastic. And with them being wall-to-wall, -wall, it's... They go much farther into creating these realistic downtown areas, you know, with all you know, these buildings being quashed together. And of course, with the Brooklyn and Queens themed buildings, these, uh, they look great also. So for the remainder of this episode, I'm going to be working on, I guess, the, the interior or like the land area around the port. For the most part, the port is complete. 
However, stay tuned because I'm gonna detail this whole area a lot. And I've actually discovered using the find it tool, you're actually able to place down props and decals. Something I didn't really know before starting this episode and really exploring what that mod was capable of. I thought it was just to find buildings. Um, but it can find props and decals and all the little things that are included in the game. So you can really, really get into the nitty gritty details uh, with just the vanilla in-game assets. But I will say, however, I don't plan on going too deep into detail as I've done in some of my previous series because I'm just never gonna finish. <laughs> and I'm kind of in a time crunch, right? Because we only have about, well, at the time of posting this video, only about like four months, four or five months, I forget now, before uh, City Skylines 2 comes out. 24th of October, so yeah, that would be like four months. So in City Skylines terms, that's not a whole lot of time, you know, cities take time to build. You know, Dunswell, I've been working on it for past a year at this point. Some of my other series went on for two years. You know, it's pretty crazy. Uh, so I don't necessarily want to rush through this series, but I, I want to get the most amount done within the time frame that I have because I know, you know, once City Skylines 2 comes out, I'm probably going to be spending a lot of time in that game <laughs> as I'm sure you guys are as well and as I was saying in the beginning of this episode um, this area is gonna have a mixture of everything I guess as close to mixed zoning as you can get um, so I'm gonna feature a lot of residential mixed in with commercial mixed in with offices I hope that noise pollution is gonna be not a non-issue um, I don't think it will though we got a lot of trees and a lot of a lot of parks. I don't, I hope it's not gonna be an issue, but all that just to say, this area is gonna be very diverse in what buildings are, uh, are gonna be here. One thing I want to get the feeling of with this area is, you know, of course with it being so close to the water and it being literally right downtown, I want it to to seem like it would be very expensive to live here. Um, you know, as I'm sure it is the case in, in Auckland, New Zealand, you know, you have all these luxury high rises right in the center of downtown, right by the water. So Rockport's gonna be no exception. You know, it's gonna be quite expensive to live anywhere near downtown with its luxury high rises, which uh, I'm gonna plop here in just a second. I gotta say these new parks that are included in the game are absolutely fantastic. These small parks, you can just kind of shove them into any little nook or in any little corner. And uh, you know, they have all the benefits as a big park. You know, they boost land value, they, create tourism you know you guys know exactly what they do but they're just fantastic they look great and and they're just a convenient little quick way of, of getting some extra little details in without you know manually having to place down trees and paths and whatever else so for the remainder of this episode this is where i'll get into some actual proper detailing with props and, and little things Something that I haven't really done in a long while in City Skyline, so it was quite interesting. Um, if you guys have any suggestions on what I should do in the next couple of episodes, let me know. I, I have gotten a few suggestions already that I really like. Um, I've gotten a suggestion to do a golf course. Um, what else? A large park. A lot of people want to see me do a large park along the mountains, so I think I'm going to do that probably in the near future. A golf course, though, would be a really, really unique and, and cool addition to bring into the city. So, yeah, all that to say is just thank you guys so much for leaving me suggestions. Um, I think it's really cool to make this sort of as much your project as much as it is mine. You know, I'd really like for you guys to have a say in what goes into the series. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, I'm just having a ton of fun here. 
I know I'm going a little bit more inland. This is not really a part of the port, but I guess it is. I guess it, it's sort of like a transitional area between the passenger port into the city. So it's, it's kind of important for it to look just right. And I know I'm kind of jumping around all over the place, but I'll often be exploring in my uh, my menus into like the find it menu and I'm like oh this building would look great over here and this prop would look great over here so I just kind of jump around from <laughs> one end to the other but yeah keep the suggestions rolling guys I love it and if you have any suggestions on what we should name different areas that would be great too um, for example the posh neighborhood I guess we'll call it that I built in episode 4 doesn't have a name and it would be cool if it did. And it would be awesome as well if the area had some sort of lore. If, if every area that we build had some sort of story behind it. Because, you know, of course cities don't spawn out of nowhere. There's something that brings settlers in and, and areas develop in certain ways because of various reasons. So it'd be cool to have a sort of backstory into each area that we build. So I guess I'll leave that up to you guys. If you want to leave me any suggestions on what we should name areas and then include a little description on like why it's named that way after, you know, some politician or whatever, <laughs> drop a comment. I love that kind of stuff. And, and that goes for the rest of the city too. You know, I'd love for the city itself to have a story and to have some sort of lore behind it. Uh, so maybe I'll ask you guys for suggestions every now and again, you know, what, what do you think about this area, for example, and, and whatnot. But I guess, yeah, that, that brings me, what am I going to work on in the next episode? Um, I'd like to get started on a residential neighborhood that's just next to the posh neighborhood. And this one's going to be much more upper middle class. You know, it's not going to be as rich, although we I could probably include some decently nice properties as you know it's by the water and whatnot but you know compared to the posh neighborhood it's going to be a lot more a lot more normal um so i'd like to get into that before getting into the downtown area and, and other parts of town because the reason why i want to do that is if you look at the rci demand screen residential demand is just slammed all the way to the roof um so i gotta knock that down a notch and bring in some more people into town to take up all the jobs that we've plopped down because I probably have like a few thousand people worth of jobs now in town. So I think uh, I think that's to come in the next episode. But anyway, back into the game. What's going on right now is uh, I'm getting into the detailing of this area. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I haven't detailed properly in this game since like Tim Buckton, I think. <laughs> you know, it's been a little while. I've also, as you notice, done some slight modifications over here to the initial port area that we built a few episodes ago, adding some lights. Um, a few people have commented that in the past, that the port area needs some large lights, of course, you know, for safety and whatnot. And uh, for a bit of extra realism, I plopped down some extra containers and some fences and, you know, just to spruce up the area a little bit. And also, as I was just talking about, I found out that decals are in the base vanilla game. I didn't realize that. Th th yeah, I was totally oblivious to that. But anyways, um, I decided to just go crazy with them and just hammer down <laughs> and lay a bunch of, you know, pavement cracks and boxes and things like that all over the place. You know, just to add a bit of life into this area. You know, just to, to push the vanilla game to its limits, just to see what the possibilities are. But I'm actually astounded, guys. I'm impressed by what is included in the base game. You know, I would have never known that these little garbage piles and, and all that kind of stuff was included. So that's really fun. And it makes for some great cinematics, which, by the way, stay tuned to the very end of this episode because I will be showcasing this whole area. It's one of the, the, it's one of the areas that I'm most proud of in my City Skylines career.
But yeah, guys, this is the port area. I had a blast building this. This was a ton of fun, and I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. So with all that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did building it. And, and if you did like it, drop a comment, drop a like, subscribe to the channel to get notified on when I release content. And until the next episode, guys, please take care.